Leo, welcome to a special love reading series that I am doing, and this is for relationships, and it's called Can This Relationship Be Healed? This is for the time period from November to the end of December 2017, so for the rest of the year. And um, I will be putting out at some point in the next couple of weeks my typical love readings for December 2017, but this one is just kind of a, what would you call it, a special type of a feature. And I like these types of readings because they give you a different way of looking at things. It's not just predictions, it's also just looking at attitudes. And obviously this is a general reading, so just take it as possible uh, food for thought. And if you'd like a private reading, my uh, the link to my website is below. And through the end of the year, I'm offering a 20% discount on all my readings with the uh, coupon code Jupiter. And so anyway, you see that I have two decks here. One of them is the Morgan Greer, the one on the left that I typically use, and the other one is the Crystal Visions deck. I will be picking one from the Crystal Visions as the shadow work to be done on your parts. So basically the work that you would do in order to heal this situation, either to reunite because this could be if you're estranged from somebody and you want to get back together or if you're in a relationship that is in trouble. It's not for <laughs> physical or emotional abuse situations and I didn't mean to laugh about that. I meant that I, won't, I have been giving that kind of a disclaimer because there are people who want to get back together or stay with somebody who is uh, really being abusive and, and it's a very uh, big threat to their well-being and yet they still want to stay in that situation and there are reasons why people would be be like that but it's something that you should never tolerate because it can accelerate and even the emotional abuse if it gets bad enough it can really wreak havoc on your whole life. So please um, find some way to leave that type of situation. You'll feel better in the long run. <clears throat> so these, the, the, you know, I, I was mentioning the type of relationships that it might fall into this category. And I even mentioned infidelity in some cases because... Um, it's a common reason why people break up, but we don't always look at the reasons that people cheat. And people just automatically flip out if you say, there are no reasons. You, you know, you're making excuses for the cheater and all this stuff. I'm not making excuses, but there are reasons. I'm explaining why things happen. Because even if you break up with somebody that cheats on you, you are going to still carry the knowledge that that happened and it can affect you affect your self-esteem very deeply if you tell yourself certain things about why they did it that have to do with you not being okay so for what it's worth i thought i think that it's important to be as understanding as possible of the motives of other people without sticking your head under in, in the sand or, you know, kind of minimizing it. But really talking to that person and seeing why they did what they did and seeing if there's any chance to reconcile. If you, if you feel like you could trust them in the future. So, um, I'll put this to the side and then just go like this as I pick my cards. It's funny, I got the, the chariot card, which is connected to cancer, 
for you, and I got the strength card for cancer, which is connected to you, for them. So maybe some of you are dealing with cancer people. Gosh, I'm getting these cards over and over again. Oh, I'm going to have to really look at that. Okay, now this is the time when I'm going to pick the, just cut the cards. <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> it's funny that I got the unknown card. This is like an extra card in this deck, right next to the moon card, which deals with maybe not knowing everything. So I'm going to pick an extra card whenever I get the nine of swords. Okay, I got another swords card. Okay, that's good. Okay. Let me just gather up these cards. Okay. So the cards in this... Um, row are all cards related to the situation at hand and we're going to look at them it doesn't matter what order the chariot is a card of being in control and this can also be a card of success of victory over something now it's a positive card this is not a card of somebody being controlling if I had picked the Emperor card, that might even be more along those lines. This is connected to the sign of Cancer, so this could also be the person that you are dealing with, your partner, your former partner. Uh, let me just keep going and we'll see how that all plays into the situation at hand. The Page of Wands is sometimes a message. Maybe it's a connection with somebody, but there's a, and that, uh, that's the fire energy. So um, you're, you're a Leo. Um, there, it, it's, we've got the world card too. So let me just bring this one up just to let you see it. The world card is talking about an end of a cycle. And of course, as, as you know, you did have, a, um, a lunar eclipse in your opposite sign of Aquarius on August 7th. So I want you to think back to the first week and beyond of August. Sometimes it can happen earlier than that. You know, you can observe people who are directly experiencing these eclipses and they may have events happen to them, you know, a week ahead of the actual date or maybe a little bit more than that or, or afterwards. And especially with these eclipses, the reverberations can maybe happen months later. And for the record, Leo, you're going to have a lunar eclipse on January 31st. And of course, this is, we're going into the future now, but you had two you had a solar eclipse and another new moon so in at the end of july and and then a month later on august 21st you had two new moons even though these are considered new beginnings there's going to be shakeups there's going to be things changing and then as i said that Aquarius lunar eclipse is your opposite sign and opposite house is the seventh house of relationships. So that may have impacted you in some way regarding a relationship ending or shifting a marriage or the equivalent of it. And that could be represented by the world card. It could also be business trips where you're traveling long distance and you met somebody and that page of wands is that sense of maybe connecting with them, even like verbally, where you felt like you, it was a meeting, uh, where you, you had like similar, I was going to say a meeting of the minds, but it's really not that. Well, it could be that, but, and it was really that sense of excitement when you meet somebody who really, that you really click with. If you have been 
dealing with people and it may even be friendly, but it doesn't have that same kind of fit. And that's that may have been the catalyst of being away from home and being in an environment where maybe you just got involved with somebody because of the situation more than anything. And that's that's one of the things too with um infidelity is that it can be situational when one person is is happens to be away from the the home and away from their typical routine and it's it's just when people say just happened nobody believes that but it can i think it can just happen uh, especially if a person is feeling very vulnerable about other things in their life um but anyway that you may have come into contact or the other person came into contact with somebody who made them feel very youthful. So it could be a midlife crisis type of situation. The other thing that could be at play here, and this is especially for long-term couples, where you are both in a transitional stage in life. So the, the world card could be transitional stage, maybe empty nest. You know, the the world card is connected with graduation, getting your diploma. I think um, <laughs> I think she's got. I thought they were batons, but I guess they might be diplomas. Um, but that could be like your your child graduating high school, and now you're alone, and all of a sudden, it's like you don't know each other, and you're like, what do we do now? And feeling your age, feeling like the best of your life has has come and gone. Those kinds of feelings can lead people to do all kinds of things. And this may just be one of them. And if somebody comes along, um, the page can indicate a younger person. So this could be, and you know, nowadays there are a lot of women <laughs> with younger men. So it's not just the cliche of the... Uh, the 50 year old or whatever now middle age is probably like somewhere in your 50s not 40s the 50 something man with his secretary you know that was always the the cliche uh who's in her 20s or something but but it could be um it could be an older woman you know who's very um a powerful person it, uh, career-wise, who has that authority, and she's doing it with um, an underling, which probably isn't a, a bright idea, but you know, it's just talking about how things have changed. Now, that's the thing with the world card; something has ended. So, in it, of course, it could be that uh, there's a marriage issue. We have two cards flanking um, these heart of the matter cards that are dealing with marriage. And I said, I keep getting these cards. This is the past position, the Hierophant. Okay. Now, I would say in this particular, I'm getting a very clear uh, signal in terms of what to interpret this as is cultural conditioning of I have to be in this position because I have to maintain this because of it's it's wrong to get divorced indoctrination you know the sometimes it could be religious churches teachings this is obviously there's a a pope there so there's some kind of um connection to that but it can be you may not even go to church but you still believe those things that it's wrong to get divorced or the other person believes that it's wrong to get divorced. And something that I would say about that is, in that particular case, then the healing would come from letting go of false beliefs. The way that you do that is through self-inquiry. And it's really t taking apart these statements like, it's a sin to get divorced and saying, why is this sin to get divorced? Who says? Who is the person? Did Jesus say this? What is the basis of this? 
are you know do people ever change do we have to be because look at friendships do people stay friends with the people that they were friends with when they were younger or do people sometimes sometimes you may have friends from when you're from your childhood but that doesn't mean it's going to happen can, can you imagine if there was some kind of a law or some kind of a moral belief around that and there's not but it is with the uh, the marriage um, area of life and so that should make you question it because it's not it's not really logical when you think about it people do change and some people want certain things at one phase of their life and they don't want it anymore and um, so uh, the Hierophant is about that conventional life and some Leo people may want to fit in it could be about excessive conformity wanting to be like other people I noticed because my partner is 11 years older than I am and around the time of his and his friends tw late 20s that seemed to be a time when everybody was getting married not necessarily the early 20s but definitely in the late 20s and then people started getting divorced in their, I guess you would say like the mid, like maybe around 40, 35 or 40. So between 15 and 20 years after that, they were getting divorced, probably about 15 years later. So, and they were doing it all, you know, a lot of them are doing it during the same, around the same time. So it seems to suggest that people are conformists. They look to their social circle to determine what it is that they're going to do in their life. And that sounds pretty silly. And uh, you have your own path. And it may differ from your family of origin. It may differ from your social circle. I would ask you if you have a social circle where you feel at odds with a lot of their ideas and their behaviors, their interests, what is it that keeps you gravitating towards them? I, the first thing I thought of was Leo, fixed sign, you know, likes to keep that continuity going. And you may have outgrown them, and maybe that's a patronizing way of looking at it. Maybe it's more like you just have gone in different directions. So, <clears throat> and that can actually influence the choices you make. So it's very important, the company that you keep. And then we have the spiritual message. The Ten of Cups, this is joy, shared joy, family joy. Um, this could mean different things for different people. One thing, this is a very positive card about happy, happily ever after. Okay, they lived happily ever after. We see that. The fairy tale. Okay. You are a very romantic, idealistic sign, Leo. Very warm, generous sign. So that is what you are looking for. You're looking for happily ever, ever after. And if you are in a loveless marriage, if you're in a marriage, or, and when I say marriage, think of committed partnership or allegedly committed partnership. If you're in a relationship where you're not experiencing that and you're with a partner who is maybe not affectionate or not giving of themselves, maybe they are just very into themselves and not in giving you attention, which Leos, that's like the probably the worst thing you can do to a Leo is, is ignore them. Whatever it could be. Ask yourself, is this leading you to happily ever after? And if not, do you think that it's your place to honor, to, to honor yourself and, and to go after what you want in life? Have you suffered enough? Or are you still feel like there's a little bit more suffering that you need to do? Remember that, I know this is a cliche, but life is short. And none of us know how long we have here. 
I think that we should follow our bliss. I really do. I don't think that's selfish. I really do not feel that it's selfish. As long as you are cognizant of other lives that you're impacting. So if you don't have an empty nest right now, if you do have children, um, the Ten of Cups could be that you're concerned about keeping that intact family going. But if the family is not happy, then that totally negates the whole purpose. If, if your marriage is kind of like a very hostile, maybe on a covert level, but a very hostile type of a thing, then it obviously is not going to do your children any, any good to be in that situation. So just keep that in mind because you may actually find that you feel more of a sense of unity when you leave that relationship. Okay. Well, let's look at the shadow card. The unknown card. Now, um, I don't have the book right in front of me for this particular deck. Maybe it's right here. No, it is not. So I can't be 100% sure of the meaning of this card. From what I remember uh, reading about it is that it's like an un the unknown, the X factor, the unknown factor in all of this. And I would say that for your shadow work, this is about really trying to uncover things that you have repressed and to acknowledge them, bring them to the light. Because with this card, we're looking at that full moon, and um, that is also kind of talking about with full moons, we're talking about, um, and it just says moon, but I'm just saying it's a full moon. Um, with full moons, there can be revelations, secrets unearthed. So sometimes these secrets are revealed to us about ourselves, not about somebody else. And all you can do is change yourself. So anytime that you can bravely and honestly look at your stumbling blocks, look at how you have allowed yourself to get involved. Maybe this is a habitual pattern of yours to get involved in relationships that don't honor you and that actually keep you feeling uh, negative about yourself. And the, I mean, even with Leo, Leo is associated with confidence, with a, I would say self-esteem, but those qualities that we associate with the shadow side of Leo, such as conceit and, you know, like a narcissistic personality, a petty tyrant who is very, you know, like a, a female version would be a diva that always is demanding, that is never satisfied. These kind of things are, when the shadow side comes out in Leo, it's because the person does not feel like their light is shining because you're, you're ruled by the sun. So part of that light shining has to be in personal relationships too. When, when a Leo person does not feel appreciated, they who knows, they can turn on themselves as well as other people and try to gain that self-esteem through crude forms of control, such as throwing your weight around, um, being overly demanding if you are a boss, being very dictatorial, just those ugly things that we associate with people who are out of control and, and have power um, control issues, okay? So the balanced Leo persona is one of conf inner confidence and 
not needing to brag, but by the same token, not being afraid to share their good fortune either. You know, knowing that fine line between being a narcissist and being your own best cheerleader. There's nothing wrong with, you know, telling people all the great things that are happening in your life. As long as you're not just going on and on about yourself and not asking about the other person and and making it all about you. And and the balanced Leo totally gets that. So that may be sometimes shadow work comes is necessary, particularly when people are out of touch with how they are how they are expressing their um, energy to others and how it's being received. And that comes from self-absorption. So that's something that, um, and, and I think also with that in terms of predictive, the predictive element of the moon card, Leo, this could also be talking about that full moon in your sign. Maybe that'll be a turning point in your life. You're going to be, you know, ending something and starting anew. And it's so wonderful. It's actually a blue moon, I think, because there is a full moon in um, Cancer on the first of the month. And that is in your 12th house, okay? So your 12th house is that hidden house. So maybe that's actually that. Those subsequent um, full moons, one being in your 12th and then the next one in your first house, that it's cle clearing the de psychic debris bringing it to light, clearing it out, and giving you some kind of closure about something. Now, the outcome, I did pick two cards. One of them is the Nine of Swords. This is the card that's associated with insomnia and a lot of anxiety. I would say that the, talking again about that full moon in Cancer, that being in the 12th house, that's kind of like a 12th house card, you know, the Nine of Swords. And there may be initially this sense of a little bit, you know, this card can, can talk about illusions and um, delusions, secrets, and maybe something comes out that is, that is upsetting, that feels that it's um, anxiety-provoking, but... When I did pick another card, to clarify it, I got the Queen of Swords, and this is that perfect marriage between, it's like being the master of your own thoughts. And the feminine energy of this is particularly good for women because women tend to be more emotional than men, and they tend to allow their emotions to control their lives. And the sword is connected to the air element gemini libra aquarius and that sense of being rational rather than emotional but you're not losing that intuitive quality of the queen or that or that um feeling aspect you're not losing that because the queen is if you if i had picked the king of swords that would be more closed off emotionally perhaps but the queen still has her feelings but she has them under control and she's also seeing through them like i said earlier with um what card was that i can't remember exactly what card i was talking about but i was talking about yeah doing self-inquiry about why you have certain beliefs oh about i was talking about marriage um, or even, you know, you can even say about a relationship, if you feel like you really love someone and you want to stay with them because you love them, even though you know that the relationship is, you know, kind of, um, it's, it's past its expiration date and you can feel it in your bones, but you're still hanging on. The Queen of Swords is like acknowledging that you have love for this person, but knowing that it's no good for you. And so you don't have to lose your heart in order to be led by your head. I guess that's the best way of putting it. So Leo, I hope you enjoyed this and I wish you all the best 
for the rest of 2017. It's been quite a year, I'm sure, for you and definitely for all of us on some level. So take care of yourselves. Bye.